You know, everything with wheels and no wings is usually designed not to roll over. Nevertheless, in Kerbal Space Program we do not have access to infinite pool of engineers designing custom parts for our vehicles. And with LEGO-like part package, standard KSP rovers prone to flipping over at a single press of a wrong button. When you add lower gravity and form factor payload constraints, it becomes even more pronounced. Fitting boxes with four wheels into a cylinder is not an enjoyable task to say the least. But what if we can just break all the rules? Make a rover that do not care about flipping over. Mark free cargo bay and our rover is not astray. Rover that have better range than vanilla wheels solution over. Rover that have bigger wheels than its cabin. <coughs> yeah. Ball shaped rover and the rover that still have everything for crew of several carvels and all the science experiments on board. Today in this video I would uncover secrets of this ball shaped rover. And to prove this futuristic technology, rover would be sent on board of my space shuttle to MAN. And to take it even step further, similar technology would apply for the mobile base on the surface of MAN. The base itself would also break several base building rules in KSP. To make the true test of both systems, I am running parallax modification with scatterer collisions enabled, so every single rock would pose an obstacle for my rover and the base. And as all space things, rover and base have a cringe name. Nomad operations, mobile solutions, or simply short, NOMS. Noms and Noms Excel. And I am skipping S, M and L versions. Just like coffee makers, never measure how strong is their coffee with only one or two stars out of five. So without further ado, let's pick over under the hood of the ball rover. That's it. It's just ball. Major theme of this rover is not to use vanilla wheels. First we take our hull or cabin that is 2.5 meters service bay. Nice and round package that can protect our kerbals and equipment. Now we need to build custom wheels. Rotors are obvious choice. But we need to keep the rover stable so our kerbals would not name it Vomitron 2000 or something even worse. And reaction control wheels are there up to the task. At first I was using biggest reaction control wheels but they are totally overkill and also lead to some construction flaws. So rover runs total of 4 medium sized reaction control wheels. Then I used 2 medium sized rotors. Small rotors are viable, however medium sized rotors just have better impact tolerance. And the biggest rotors require just too much power to pack into this form factor. Next step is to construct custom tires. And this is a tricky part. First I add my frame and then I use medium grip pads with maximum grip setting. And 8 weight symmetry is just not enough to cover the tire completely. So I just hack the 16 weight symmetry into the game. And it turns out to be a very simple procedure. Add any grandparent part. Add parent part to a grandparent part in 8 weight symmetry. Take grandparent part and set it to 2 way symmetry. Now take your grip part or daughter part and just hover over the parent part. And well, voila. you have 16 way symmetry. This way you can have infinite amount of symmetry and even odd number of symmetry. Pretty handy tool when you build round shapes in Kerbal Space Program. To make my wheel a bit stronger, I also add second set of grip pads at roughly 45 degree angle. And wheel cups have smaller service base that are almost indestructible when doors are opened. Oracle feature, never used it live, but better to be safe than mashed potato. For the rotors, make sure to use one rotor in invert direction. And RPM setting should be set relatively low. 100 is more than enough for 1G of carbon and MAN is good enough at 30 RPM. Our throttle control is done with torque setting. Just go to the main throttle in the action groups and here you can add torque controls. This will control torque setting with the basic keyboard shortcuts like Shift, Ctrl, Z and X. Just make sure to lock your rotors when you operate your rocket engines. Well, having two very powerful spinning wheels inside of your cargo bay is not the best feature of this design. Secure things in transport. And this is all the setup that you need for the wheels. Now you can add all the parts inside of your service bay. I managed to fit three seats for the gearbox, mobile lab with all the experiments, medium sized science arm, antennas, ladder, large fuel cell and two RTGs. Power requirement for this rover is incredibly low and this is thanks to lower RPM settings. Two RTGs can power custom wheels indefinitely and fuel cell is more of like glorified battery and buffer if you want to transmit your science. And now this rover is more than equipped to traverse through multiple biomes farming the science. And before we develop the bigger nomad base, let's test our custom wheels on the surface of MAN.
As a launch system, I'm using my perfectly balanced shuttle from my first KSP video on this channel. This is pretty much perfectly balanced spaceplane with two large boosters. Boosters have total of 8 vector engines, and main gravity turn and circularization are done with the orbiter itself. Rapiers boost spaceplane into the nice high orbit first, and once in vacuum of space, spaceplane flips into the z-axis. Then open up cargo bay, and it reveals 8 nuclear engines, and the rest is just straightforward. While convoluted in construction, this layout removes drag from engines and also perfectly balanced craft for the vacuum landings. And there is no up and down in vacuum of space, so there is no reason to keep spaceplane pointing prograde with the bow. After orbital injection, spaceplane have more than enough delta V to reach MAN. Simple burn to MAN, and later simple orbital injection into MAN circular orbit. And landings in this space shuttle are very easy when it comes to MAN. 8 nuclear engines is a bit overkill and I think I was designing it to land something like 80 ton payloads when we have just only 20 tons in our cargo bay. And also I'm kinda curious what payload you can fit into this form factor and it would weigh like 80 tons, I don't know, but I designed this thing and I'm using it and it works. And here you can see the biggest benefit of this engine layout. First you are perfectly balanced around of your center of mass, and even when payload offset the center of mass, RCS is more than enough to correct for such a small deviation. And second benefit is when you are using your landing gear as a landing gear. And the third benefit lies in the ability to deploy your payload from the bottom facing cargo bay. You just drop your payload and body hop spaceplane to the side. Nice, clean and easy. And this is space shuttle for one simple reason. Convertatron and two large reels are just too heavy for an SSO of a similar shape. So first I am referring this space plane with ISRU. Here I am aiming for 6942 points of fuel. This is very accurate prediction for return delta V provided by my Kerbal engineers. And now it is time to test the ball rover. Gloriously drop my Kerbals from several meters because, well, extending ladders is just too much. Small space flock and here we are at the rover. Only preparations are to crew the rover and to unlock the rotors. SAS need to be engaged, doors to be closed and brakes turned off. And immediately I can see how overpowered are those wheels. And if on Kerbin it acts more like a wheel, here on MAN in MAN gravity it is just like a huge multi-ton ball. Just wait until I start hitting rocks on a purpose. I would say this was a complete success. Rover have everything to farm several biomes and it is not afraid of flipping over. And honestly it feels more like a controllable ball that you throw around than a vehicle or rover of sorts. It's really bizarre and awesome at the same time. Really nice vehicle, almost indestructible, although if you try enough you will destroy it, but still it's way better than any conventional rover that I have ever made for my mission. The second payload of first mission was the habitation module. Made small design flaw here, there is no prop core, so I could not really operate this module, I could not extend landing gear, whatever, uh, so I just will chill until I can fix it with the second mission. Launch from the man was almost a disaster, since to operate the mining rig I need a bit of oxidizer for the fuel cells, and naturally I forgot to turn off rapier engines. So the launch was a really hairy one. I was scared there for a moment, nevertheless no rocks were in the way, so plane just transitioned into the nice 45 degree angle of ascent. After my orbital injection I do Kerbin Aero Brake Burn, and here I am aiming for very conservative 45 km Kerbin Dive. And thanks to well balanced RCS, spaceplane can hold radial out for quite some time and then adopt 45 degree angle for a deeper aero brake. After the main part of aero brake I just help with the engines, just to lower my altitude even lower. And the orbit is pretty straightforward thanks for the trajectories mod. Was rather off with my deorbit burn and ended up reaching runway with an empty fuel tanks. And here is rather epic landing below the stall limits and do not do this at home TM. Second launch have a bit heavier payload and two boosters were a bit inadequate for the task. Orbital injection was way off and space plane ended up scraping upper atmosphere for the first orbit. But thanks to the high orbital delta V, it is an easy fix. Need just to be more precise and careful with man landing now. Man burn and man injection went as planned, and here we go for the landing. Landing is done at the same spot. I undershot my target, so after landing, I have decided to refuel first and then bunny hop closer to the target. Once I landed in one click from my first landing site, it was time to deploy the payload. The payload itself is a science module for the base with two custom wheels of similar to rover design. 
but driving this with parallax collisions enabled is kinda a short endeavor. So there are two pistons to increase the clearance from the ground and they also act as a primitive suspension. And SAS is champion here when it comes to keeping this string straight upright. Just make sure to not to hit the 100% throttle, otherwise this thing will flip over. And traversing one click is a nice test for this module. However, it is not the end goal for the Nomad base itself. This is only one of two components once I dock with the cavitation module. At landing site alpha it was time to fix the cavitation module itself, and fixes are rather easy, just like slapping the probe core onto the module, and from here I just lowered the science module and docked it with the habitation module after like smashing multi-billion Kerbal Bug space toys together for like several times. Until they work, yeah, just smash things, yeah, why not? And this is all the goals for the second mission, and exciting things will happen with the third one. Ascent, injection, air brake, deorbit, landing, you know the drill. Third launch carry even heavier payload, so I upgraded my boosters with some fuel. And it was a perfect adjustment for a rather chill orbital injection. Mud burn and injection went as planned, and third landing just overshot targets kinda a lot, so small adjustment was made thanks to the high Delta V budget. Payload number 3 is a mining creek for my Nomad base. And honestly, it's a bit unnecessary since like Solar and RTG can totally cover the wheel energy demand for this base, but as very real, it just looks dope and in any case, building a base in Kerbal Space Program is kinda pointless anyway. Come on, let's be real, like, at this point I'm just playing like my imaginary world, like my imaginary sandbox with my own rules and I just having a blast. Like, the best way to play the computer games, just have fun. With the Mining Creek I hit full throttle two times on an accident, so transfer to a landing site alpha was a bit questionable, but we already established that, well, smash tolerance for this mission is pretty high, if something did not explode it's kinda alright, and, well, there's no page screen of death in KSP-1, so... yeah. Alright, Mining Creek have arrived. And the main magic of the assembling multimodule rover is ability to make an articulated suspension. Four pistons act as a dampener when you are setting dampening setting to the maximum value, and with the passive rotor in between the modules, you can make a passively articulated suspension in the roll axis. And after testing the settings of this fully assembled system, I have arrived into the following settings and conclusions. First, running at 100 RPM is just totally overkill, so 20 or 30 is more than enough for your rotor engines. Piston dampening is almost negligible in man gravity since, well, 31 ton rover is just too light and bounce off the rocks. So, this rover is nice probably for a Duna mission, and for man, just make sure to pack several ore tanks into the wheels and fill them with ore on site. And here you can see all my monster truck beauty shots. I just need to really like some vroom vroom engine noises or something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Man, this Nomad base is just so awesome, I don't know. Yeah, I will definitely upload base and ball rover to my Kerbal X, and they are both pure stock and all the visual flair is done with uh, visual mods only. And here is the full list of mods uh, that I used to make this video on your screen. And I hope this video was inspiring, and now your Kerbal system is doomed to be a graveyard of huge rover bases. And until the next time, have a nice one. And Yakis, out. <laughs>